In today's video, I will review Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. Sheryl said she wrote this book to encourage women to dream big, to forge a path through the obstacles and to achieve their full potential. Keep watching to find out more. Hi, I'm Linda and welcome to my YouTube channel, Better You Books, where I read and review books that help you to become a better version of yourself. In today's review of Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg, I'll tell you more about the book, my thoughts and key takeaways, my favourite quote, as well as who I recommend this book for, and I'll give it a rating out of five. So keep watching till the end to see what score I gave it. This book was released in 2013, and I became interested in it after hearing Sheryl talk on the Desert Island Discs podcast. Sheryl is the Chief Operating Officer at Facebook and has been since 2008. She is frequently named as one of the most powerful women in business in the world. Cheryl did a TED Talk in 2010 entitled Why We Have Too Few Women Leaders and it prompted her to write this book. Lean In is her first book, it sold millions of copies and it was on the New York Times bestseller list for more than a year. She has since written an expanded version specifically for graduates and she has released one more book in 2017 entitled Option B, in which she talks about building resilience after the unfortunate death of her husband. Cheryl has a website, leanin.org, which encourages women to share ideas and reach their full potential. She now has over 44,000 Lean In circles in more than 170 countries. In the book, Cheryl writes, This book is not a memoir, although I have included stories about my life. It is not a self-help book, although I truly hope it helps. It is not a book on career management, although I offer advice in that area. It is not a feminist manifesto. Okay, it is sort of a feminist manifesto, but one that I hope inspires men as much as it inspires women. This book is divided into 11 chapters, which include topics like sit at the table, don't leave before you leave, and the myth of having it all. Here are my three key takeaways from the book. Number one, your career path does not have to be vertical. In the book, Cheryl talks about there only being one way to get to the top of a ladder, but many ways to get to the top of a jungle gym. She says that a lot of people will feel like they need to keep going up the ladder and get promoted, but that's not necessarily the case. It could be a good move to go sideways and go to a company that's growing or that you feel really passionate about. Even going downwards to a new area could be a good move. In the book, she talks about one of her friends who was considering moving to a new area but was worried that this move would set her back a few years. She writes, If she was going to work for the next 30 years, what difference does going back four years really make? If the other path made her happier and offered her a chance to learn new skills, that meant she was actually moving forward. And I completely agree especially in the current climate when unfortunately so many people are losing their jobs and lots of industries are struggling. I think we don't always have to move up. There are different directions we can go. I know some of my friends have stayed in jobs that they have been desperately unhappy because for them, the only choice was promotion and they couldn't contemplate anything else. Whereas personally for me, the most important thing is being challenged and fulfilled at work. Number two, Women often judge their performance as worse than it is. In the book, Cheryl includes research which shows that women often judge their performance as worse than it is and men actually judge their performance as better. This was really fascinating to me and goes a long way to explain why women often struggle from imposter syndrome more often than men. In the book, Cheryl writes, Ask a man to explain his success and he will typically credit his own innate qualities and skills. Ask a woman the same question and she will attribute her success to external factors, insisting she did well because she worked really hard or she got lucky or had help from others. I was reading this thinking Cheryl was talking directly to me as I can definitely do all of those things. Cheryl says that in order to grow and be challenged, we need to believe in our own abilities. Finally, number three, bring your whole self to work. Cheryl writes... Sharing emotions builds deeper relationships. Motivation comes from working on things we care about, 
It also comes from working with people we care about. To really care about others, we have to understand them, what they like and dislike, what they feel as well as think. Emotion drives both men and women and influences every decision we make. Recognising the role emotions play and being willing to discuss them makes us better managers, partners and peers. I've always thought I was good at this because I do care about the people I work with and I work in travel, which is a really friendly industry. However, thinking about it, I realised I mostly share positive emotions and keep all of my negative emotions bottled up because I feel like I have to be professional and also I need to look like I have it together all the time. However, I realised from reading this book and also from Emotional Agility, which I reviewed last week, that this is not the case. In the past, sometimes I've bottled these feelings up so much that I've kind of got to a breaking point. Whereas I now think perhaps if I had shared them along the way, it might not have gotten to that stage. I love quotes and this is my favourite one from the book. In the future, there will be no female leaders. There will just be leaders. I love this idea. At the moment when there is a woman in a prominent position like a CEO or perhaps a prime minister, they are often referred to as a female CEO, whereas men are never referred to as a male CEO. Hopefully this will change. In the book, Cheryl talks about why women's progress in leadership roles has stalled. She doesn't try to solve the overarching problem. Instead, she talks about how we as women can also hold ourselves back. She writes, In addition to the external barriers erected by society, women are hindered by barriers that exist within ourselves. We hold ourselves back in ways both big and small, by lacking self-confidence, by not raising our hands, and by pulling back when we should be leaning in. This book doesn't have all the answers, but it definitely poses some interesting questions. Cheryl says that successful women are often not likeable, but I actually did find her very likeable in the book. I also really enjoyed all of the research and statistics that she used to back everything she set up. The most memorable bit of research for me was the Howard versus Heidi case study. If you haven't heard of it, then definitely Google it. She also had some really nice anecdotes from herself and from other women's careers. There are several chapters on being a mother, which I didn't personally relate to, but I still found them interesting. And I think that women with kids could get even more out of this book. I was shocked at how much of the book I was shocked at. I work in travel, which is predominantly female industry, and Cheryl works in technology, which attracts more men. So her experiences may be more pronounced. However, she said that she'd never had a female boss. I thought about it, and I've had three since I started working in travel. But then I realised I've had seven male bosses. So only 30% female bosses in an industry that has way more women. And that was definitely eye-opening to me. This book has attracted a lot of criticism, especially in the last few years. However, I think a lot of the criticism is from people making the message really simplistic and not understanding all the nuances that Cheryl talks about in the book. The most famous piece of criticism comes from Michelle Obama, who said that leaning in doesn't work all the time. However, Cheryl never says that it does. Another criticism that she gets frequently is that she doesn't really comment on how think factors like race or class can make leaning in even more difficult for some women. And I do think this is an admission. Others say that she is putting all the onus on women and none on institutions and society. But I don't think that is fair. Cheryl does acknowledge that the world has to change. And she has a foundation which does a lot of research and also raises awareness. However, the point of this book is to talk about the things that are within our own power to change. I enjoyed this book. I found the research and statistics particularly interesting. And it made me rethink how I behave at work. This book doesn't solve all the issues of inequality, but neither is it supposed to. It's about starting a conversation and it aims to arm women with tools to better help themselves. I always think that you should take what you like from a book and leave the rest. There are things in this book that women may not relate to and lots of people don't want to be as high up in their careers necessarily as Cheryl, but I still think there are a lot of important takeaways you can take from the book. I'm giving this book four stars. I would recommend it to any women in the workforce and for any graduates, they should look at her Lean In For Graduates book. I also think that male managers could get a lot out of it too. So what do you think? Are you interested in reading this book for yourself? If so, drop me a comment below and we've included links to the book, Cheryl and her Lean In circles in the description. 
and I'm going to look at joining a Leaning Circle myself in London. If you prefer listening to audiobooks rather than reading them, this book is also available on Audible. And for those of you who don't have the time to read a book right now, I would recommend her TED Talk. Next week, I'm going to be reviewing Happy by Fern Cotton. This book is about finding joy in the everyday and letting go of perfect. Watch next week to find out more. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're the first to know about my future videos. I hope you have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.